Hey everybody, welcome to T-Roy Cooks. Appreciate you joining us again. We've got another Thursday chatting with Troy. And I got a special guest here. James from Aim'em and Claim'em Smokers. I appreciate you joining me here, James. Thanks for having always, me, Brother Troy. Always good having you over here. It's always we're, a pleasure being here. We're actually doing a cook today, and you'll see <clears> some <throat> of it on my videos in the future, and some of it on James's Aim'em and Claim'em Smokers. Y'all go check them out. And uh, folks, my buddy here, he, he's a hell of a cook. I really hope y'all go subscribe to his channel if you're not already. And I appreciate you having me over here, man. Thank you for uh, having me. We're, we're going to do some of these questions here. Got a, a big, thick list of them here. A lot. A lot of them. A lot of them, folks. We're going to go through them, and I'm going to let James answer some of them for you. And I may chime in if I feel the need. Otherwise, we're just going to swap back and forth and see if we can answer some of these questions. Get through them pretty quick, hopefully. But uh, no telling how long this video is going to be, because... It could be a while. It could be a little while, so... Anyway, if you got questions, if it's your first time here, if you have a question, put it down in the comments down below. And if it's a prompt, if you need a prompt answer, let me know that because it may take four, five, six weeks for me to answer your question on these future Thursday chats. So if it's, if it's something you need to answer to real quick, let me know that. Otherwise, put your question down below in the comments. If I mention any YouTubers you may be interested in checking out or any products that me or James may mention, or, uh, you know, if you just want to check out our social media, I'll put James's social media in the description box along with mine. And also, the questions that we're answering, they will be listed in the description box. And you ask, how do you get there? Just click show more right beneath the video, folks. You can go to the description box. A lot of helpful information there. Hope y'all check that out. Uh, James. Yes, sir. I see you got a drink right there, man. <coughs> what, what are you drinking? <laughs> I, I, need, I, need, I need a brother to hook me up. Mm. Well, if you uh, you follow my channel, then you know uh, I love me some Tito's. So that's what this is. Some ooh Tito's with a little cran mango mix. Well, where uh, hook me up, man? <laughs> you got it, brother. Hook me up. Come on, Let's man. Let's go. Let's see if the. You know what? <clears throat> so we're not drinking beer today, folks. We're not gonna, today. We're doing some Tito's today. I'm a I'm a liquor kind of guy, and well. We don't need this. No, no, we don't. We don't. Just just pour me a good one. How about that? There you go. <laughs> Hook a brother up. Wow, we miss you, man. Go Hippie Barbecue. Link's down below. Click show more. What's up, brother Lyle? Lyle. I miss you. It's great hanging out with you the other day, man. I appreciate that, man. Great seeing you and Thyron on there. TNT Barbecue. Everybody yeah, check him out as well, folks. That looks nice. That looks real nice. Mm, mine's not quite as pink as yours. I think I got a little more Tito's in mine. He might. He I, might. I, I have to drive. I appreciate that. That's right. Well, you know, <laughs> you're welcome to stay here, you know. But uh, here, cheers to you, my friend. Cheers, brother. Thank you for having me. Brother James, appreciate you being here. It's oh, always a yeah. pleasure. That is so nice. You can't smell that, but... Oh got yeah, some smoke in the air. Yes, yes, I got my Yoda Wichita fired up. We're cooking. It's an all-day cook. <clears throat> Again, y'all check out our channels for our cooking videos coming up. It's gonna be fantastic. Trust me. <laughs> James. Yes, sir. Here's my list. Would you please take the first question, my friend? I will. And the first question is from John Hill Jr. And John says, "Hi, Troy. Talking to you. Thanks for taking the time to answer everyone's questions. Here's mine." When you open your, your cooker to spritz, wrap, or whatever, you lose heat. When you close it back up, do you ever make any vent adjustments to get it back to the temp that it was at? How long does it typically take for your cooker to return a temp? I have a WSM, a Weber Smoky Mountain, and I find myself adjusting vents after taking the lid off, but I think if I were more patient, it would return on its own. Thanks. Great question, John. Uh, as someone who, you know, I own four Weber Smoky Mountains, I cook on them every single weekend. So this is actually something that I deal with <coughs> all the time. I'm going to suggest you do not adjust the vents. Leave the vents right where you have them. I agree. And you, when, when you get that lid back on, your temp, it does not take long to come back to the, the set temp that it was already sitting at. Now, I will say... If you have your lid off for a long period of time, 
that might be a little different. So I'm going to suggest trying to keep that lid um, uh, not off as long as possible. You know, if you can get it off, get it back on, do what you got to do, get it back on. Leave your vents where they're at, they'll be fine. Now, there have been times when I've taken my lid off and, and have had to leave it off for a good amount of time. A lot of airflow got in there and, and really stoked that fire. And I've had, had to, I've, uh, have had to go in and kind of uh, shut off my vents a little bit just to bring it down. But if you don't leave your lid off for a long period of time, you'll be fine. Get that lid off, spritz, pull your meat off, wrap it, get the lid back on and uh, leave your vents where they're at and uh, your, your WSCM should come back to the temp that it's at fairly quickly without any problems. Again, I, I cook on these every single weekend, so this is actually something that I deal with on the regular. So that would be my, my advice to you. The, the shorter you keep the lid off, the better. Um, and I would say be, be a little patient. Trust where you have those vents and trust that that, that temperature will come back to the where was that before you took the lid off? That's been my findings as well. I, I agree 100 percent Just keep your vents where they are. It'll come back. It'll it'll equalize, okay? And it'll come back to where you where it was before. <clears throat> great, great question. Great answer. That was a great question. Appreciate the question, John. I think a lot of people have that issue. Honestly. I know. They so, do. They do. They good do. question. They don't know. Um, I've got one here from Daniel Myers. Hey there, T Roy. I'm new to your channel and I haven't seen all your videos yet, but I apologize if this is this question has been asked. I'm interested in getting a stick burner and I'm wondering where do you get your wood? I see stuff for sale at the grocery store and sometimes at the hardware store, but heard that because of, because if when they drive, uh, let me see, I see stuff for sale in the grocery store and sometimes at the hardware store, but heard that because if the way they dry it, it burns hot and fast, any suggestions? It will, it will dry burn they do dry. It will burn quicker and faster. I think this drink's messing with me already. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe she uses a measuring cup. The main thing, James and I were actually talking about this a while ago. Uh, the stuff that you buy at your, your local hardware stores and whatnot, uh, they don't have bark on the wood. It will burn quicker and hotter, and you won't quite get as much smoke. The, the bark on the wood is like an insulation. I've mentioned this before. Uh, the bark itself is an insulation for the tree against fire and insects and what else you know so if you buy wood that does not have bark on it it will burn quicker and it won't last as long and you will get a nice true thin blue smoke off of it as well if I can buy wood from a Yoder Wichita that doesn't have a bark on it that's what I prefer it may be a little bit more pricey because it's a little more work to remove the bark but it's worth it in my opinion James, one next next question, man. I'm gonna have to skip a few pages. I let James go through all the questions, and he picked the ones that he wanted to answer. <clears throat> so go for it, James. So this one is from Hannah D, and it says, "Would you ever be interested in future in a vegetarian recipe using your Weber Smoky Mountain smoker?" Well, that's a good question. It is, and and in fact, uh, I I love to to venture out outside of the barbecue uh, ram, and and so doing a a recipe a vegetarian recipe and I, I'm actually working on something right now that I think is gonna be excellent for that nice. uh, you know I, I think while I love me some meat you know oh, yeah you can you can still take like a vegetarian recipe and make it really good uh, and, and to, 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 to find one where you can add some smoke from that Weber Smoky Mountain to it man I, I think it, it just helps set that recipe uh, over the top. You know, roasting vegetables or putting them in the smoker, it adds a distinctive flavor that's not common when you would steam a vegetable yeah. or any any other way to cook it. You know, they just you get it's more it's almost like a nutty flavor. You know, I, I love I love it, and and we do actually we'll take some asparagus for instance and put that you on go. you know <laughs> or Brussels sprouts put that on your smoker. It's primo. It's good stuff. Yeah, my my wife loves that asparagus, and when I smoke it, it's just I know. Man, it's you know, top it off with a little butter, salt, or whatever, and it's so good, man. It's, it's excellent. It's so good, yeah. so good. Was that for that question? That's yep. it. All right, all right. So we're moving on here. Let's see. I got one from Andy Olson. T Roy, love the shirt, man. Hey, I appreciate that. That's, that's a one of a kind shirt. 
That was made by my buddy Daryl over at uh, Bad Beast Barbecue. Y'all go check him out. Again, the link's down below. <clears throat> Appreciate the shirt, Daryl. You need to hook me up with some more so I can sell them to these fine fans, okay? <clears throat> uh, let's see. Andy says, Yoda recommends that you dry out a pit a few times during the winter if you're not using it. What I always have done is coat the inside of the unit with some peanut oil before the winter and call it a day. Do you dry out your pit with a few burns? Andy, uh, I really don't have to do that because it doesn't snow and doesn't get real cold down here in Central Texas. But uh, we do get some rain. And yeah, if I haven't used my Wichita in you know, three or four weeks, I'll go ahead and fire it up just, just to kind of burn the moisture out of the inside. You know, just kind of heat up the metal. And that, that does help it stay from uh, rusting out on the inside. And then I'll go ahead and coat it down with some oil and it's good to go until the next time I need it. So yeah, I do do that every once in a while. Plus I like just firing it up just so I can smell the wood. When I'm out swimming in the pool and stuff, I love that smell, man, it's good stuff. Great question, Andy. What else you got there for us, James? You got another one? Yep. Let's see. <clears throat> this is from Ryan B. Ryan B says, Troy, this is awesome. This is somewhat urgent. So I hope we're getting to it in time. I hope we're getting to it in time. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you mention uh, Texas rib candy uh, in this video, and I have seen you use it in past videos. You make it sound like it's a bomb, and I would like to try to get my hands on some. I will be in Austin visiting a friend in a couple of weeks, and I'm wondering if you know of a place in Austin to buy some, or if it's only available online. I fell in love with barbecuing while living in Dallas from 2009-2013 and I had a hard time finding good barbecue when I moved to Denver. Your videos, along with several other channels, inspired me to buy a uh, Weber Smoky Mountain uh, and more recently Kamado Joe. Thank you for all you do and for taking the time to answer all these questions. So as far as this Texas rib candy, um, you know, there, unfortunately there aren't a whole lot of places you could get it. Of course you can buy it online, but there are, there are, there are a few places and you usually have to find a vendor that uh, that carries it. I mean, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to find it like at our local grocery store. And they're they're out of Houston, I think. Yeah, right? they have the Houston area. Yeah. So uh, there there are a couple of vendors. You know, there's one in Central Texas, just south of Austin, that I use, and they have a ton of that stuff in stock. So I'm not sure when you're coming into Austin, and uh, you know, if you're interested, I would suggest googling uh, Hill Country Barbecue Supply Store. They're 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 local. I know they carry it. That's where I get it from, and um, they they even ship out to people. So you, you may be able to just contact them, you know, pay online or pay with a credit card or with a phone or whatever, and have them ship it out to you. So uh, you know, unless you find a vendor like that, it's going to be really tough to to find it at a local, uh, you know, grocery store around town. I just haven't seen it anywhere. Yeah, I hadn't either. It's it's yeah. just I, I have to buy it online myself. So. You know, there you go. Hope that helped. And, and sorry if we got to your question late. I, I think I actually did contact Ryan and give him some options, you know, because he did mention it was kind of urgent. But it's a great question because I know a lot of my fans out there, if you're interested in that rib candy and stuff that I use on my ribs. It's really, really good stuff. Great stuff. It is good stuff. We're using it today, as a matter of fact. We are, in fact. <laughs> Let's see what else I've got here. Uh, Jake O'Neill. Jake says, I'm curious how you decide which grill you're going to use on any given cook. Uh, that's a, that's the, actually a great question. And it's nice having options. Trust me. Uh, you know, I, I just it's just the flow of the moment. It's just how I feel at the moment when I'm, I'm wanting to do a cook, actually. Um, I don't like to neglect any of my grills for a month or two or three or four months. You know, I like to show them awesome love. So it kind of depends on which one I haven't used recently. Like, uh, you know, sometimes I may go two or three months without using my Weber Smoky Mountain. And then all of a sudden you see me cooking a lot of my Weber Smoky Mountain. Same thing with my Kamado Joe. Same thing with my Yoder Wichita. Um, and I'm going to be getting a Weber Kettle soon, so y'all stay, stay tuned for that. That's going to be nice. So it's nice to have options. And I just try not to neglect any one particular pit for very long. Because I know a lot of you have your Kamados, you have your Weber Smoky Mountains, uh, you've got your offset pits, 
and you know I, I'm trying to show the love and spread it around so great question but uh, there's no rhyme or reason whichever one I just feel like firing up and a lot of times too it depends on whether I've got charcoal briquettes or lump charcoal <laughs> or if I've got wood from a Wichita you know that comes into play as well so just whatever I've got on hand whatever I can use that's what I go with but I love all of my pits I love all my cookers and uh, I just kind of roll with the flow doesn't matter they all cook great all right so the next question is from Michael Dora it says I'm looking to purchase a DGQ DX2 for my Weber Smoky Mountain have you tried this if you have how have the results been thanks man keep up the good work keep up the good work Troy cheers to you <clears throat> appreciate that Michael uh, I just actually very recently bought uh, bought one myself and you know I've tried it on my Weber Smoky Mountain once and you know honestly the Weber Smoky Mountain is such a great smoker as far as being able to hold temperature it on is. its own yeah. that you almost don't even need it uh, for one uh, in the the time that I used it, it was really windy, so it did kind of help out, you know, on, on like a, on a windy day. But, um, you know, I, I was actually contemplating buying two of them, and I'm glad I only pulled the trigger on one. I, I really just, you know, I, I don't think that, uh, particularly for the Weber Smoky Mountain, that that particular smoker really needs one. Now, they're great. Again, I have one, and I'll, I'll continue to use it, but if... if if I buy another one, it'll probably probably be for my Weber kettle, uh, which which uh, I can probably use a little more help in controlling the temp on that. As far as the Weber Smoky Mountain go, uh, goes, um, I, you know I, I don't I don't I don't know that it needs it a whole lot. It, it is it is a great device to have, and you know maybe my opinion will change after I you know use it for a longer period of time. But my experience so far has been. The Weber Smoky Mountain will hold the temp even without it consistently for hours on end. You know, even until it runs that. out of fuel. Right. Yeah, I've had my Weber Smoky Mountain, you know, easily 15 hours at 250. Me too. Just on its own. Yeah. A and um, and it could have gone a lot longer. I just had to shut it down. So, um, you know, I, I don't know that the, the results when I used it uh, on my meat were any different. Um, but again, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna have to play with it more to kind of figure out. The DigiQ does it? Does it have uh, the fan? It does. Okay. So I've got the Barbecue Guru. And well, the Guru has a fan. Yeah, it does. And I actually had an adapter put on my Yoda Wichita for the Barbecue Guru for the fan. But I found that that fan blew right into the ashes where they were dropping through the the charcoal grate or through the wood grate in the Yoda Wichita. And it would blow ash on my meat and it didn't really help on the offset and i have tried it also i got an adapter for my kamado joe and the same thing i mean the kamado joe is like the weber smoky mountain it maintains temps when you set the vents you don't have to use a fan to keep temps the thing does it by itself and if anything at all it's just blowing ashes up into your meat which you know you don't really want but uh i mean nothing against those companies i'm just Honestly, I'm just telling you what my opinion is of it, you know. But if you've got a Weber Smoky Mountain, you don't you don't need anything like that. It's a set it and forget it kind of a smoker. Yeah, again, unless you're cooking on like a really really windy day, or or, or if it's like maybe really cold. Or, right, right. If it's really down cold. here. That's not something we have to deal with. You're really yeah. part of the country where we don't. Yeah, where uh, you know cold weather is is something you have to deal with. Yeah. Then I actually I, I think that would work. It would. Great. It would work up north. For that. Yeah. Right. Maybe if you're in Canada or somewhere, or in northern United States or Europe, yeah, that probably would work for you. Because okay. it'll, it'll help feed that fire, you know. But it'll probably make your fire, your fuel not last as long because it's, it's steadily blowing, you know. I'm sure it cuts on and off and everything, but <clears throat> your fuel's not going to last as long because if it's cold, you're burning more fuel regardless. Okay. Is it my turn again? Yes, sir. We're just going to keep flip-flopping back and oh, forth? Let's flip-flop. <laughs> see, see where we're at here. Uh, 
All right, I think I, uh, let me see here. Do I, did I answer all these on this page? Yeah, the first one you got. Uh, no, I didn't. I got this last one right here. Right here. Oh, Jake. Yeah, Jake O'Neill. Hey, Troy, love your videos. Between you and Baby Bank Maniac, I'm getting pretty inspired to hone my barbecue skills. Oh, yeah, we did get that one. We did? Yeah, I'm curious. curious. Oh, yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm sorry. Next question. I know I'm getting, I know. I know. <laughs> it's his fault. It's his fault, folks. <laughs> Hand Cannon. Long time subscriber. Appreciate your support, man. Cheers to you. <clears throat> you can, I'm getting a little hoarse over here. I ain't drinking fast enough. This this doesn't go down as smooth as uh, beer does. It, it, it messes with you. All right, Hand Cannon says, I have a question for you. Have you ever made a stuffed meatloaf? If so, what did you use for the filling, and would anything be gained by cooking it on a smoker? I've never done a stuffed meatloaf. Have you, James? Not stuffed. No, I haven't either. Never done a stuffed one. And, uh, I, I mean, just, I love smoked meatloaf. I really do. It tastes a whole lot better than just regular baked in the oven. But, you know, if I were to stuff one, I don't know, man. I, I, I'd probably just like put some cheese or cheese something right. in it. Yeah, I mean that's the way I go with it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to complicate it because already the meatloaf has so much stuff in it. You know, it's a, uh, it's got a lot of flavor going on anyway. I wouldn't really stuff it with a whole lot of anything extra other than maybe some cheese. Yeah. But smoked is the way to go. Smoked meatloaf is a da bomb. It's good stuff. Go ahead, James. What you got, man? Uh, this one is from, and I apologize, Chris, if I pronounce your last name wrong. Thanks, Chris. Stat Thanks for the question, Chris. Yes, uh, Chris Stinkus. Stinkatus. 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 My apologies, brother. My apologies. Mine too. Mine too. Uh, you you asked. Um, you do a six to eight or even longer cook. When do you stop adding wood? There comes a point when the smoke is done doing its job, and you're just using the heat to get the meat up the temp. When do you stop smoking the meat? Uh, so you're not wasting good smoking wood or over smoking the meat and the second question is uh, I've been he says I've been smoking a bit on my Weber kettle I'll be right back gotta gotta put some wood on the Yodi Wichita sure. thank you uh, I've been smoking a bit on my Weber kettle and it's okay but I'm really ready to move up what is your opinion on propane vault smokers like the Camp Chef smoke vault or the master belt line it seems straightforward. Propane burner heats the wood chips and it causes them to smoke. Smoke rises and vents out to the top. Uh, they tend to be very reasonably priced, but I, I don't understand enough of what I'm trading off versus a smoker that is sufficiently more expensive. Thank you very much and I appreciate these Thursday's chats. I'm learning a lot. Um, your meat is only going to take smoke for the first probably about four hours and you know it's kind of give or take a little bit anything yeah, it depends that, on the size yeah yeah how thick it is and all that <clears throat> after about four hours I, um we really cooking y'all we are <laughs> <laughs> after about four hours it's really not going to take a whole lot of smoke it's not going to take any more smoke only up to a certain point yeah um and so you know after about that point i would probably cut back on the smoke the, the wood and just continue with uh if you're using charcoal, say on your Weber Smoky Mountain or something, uh, continue with that. Uh, but yeah, after after about four hours, you know, if you're using an offset, you, you really have to watch it. Uh, well, let me back up a little bit. If if you burn your wood right, you can you can leave a piece of meat on there. Again, it, it depends on what you're smoking and the size of meat. You know, something from like a a tenderloin to a brisket is that is obviously going to vary you know and how much smoke it could take depends but, on airflow too yeah so we're because talking about a you mentioned 68 hours so i'm you know we're i'm reckoning we're talking pork butt briskets stuff like that um you know if, if you get a good airflow you get a, a good clean burn you can actually leave it longer uncovered without over smoking it i mean again it's only going to take smoke up to a certain point about the four hour mark and then after that that you know stop taking that smoke but if you burn it clean you won't over smoked meat so you don't necessarily have to wrap it at that point and and also too i'm gonna add on to that if you're burning it on an offset anyway if you're burning clean smoke you got the light thin blue smoke 
the heat is cooking the meat and the smoke that's coming through there is just kissing that meat and it's going to really make a great bark so you got that to look forward to so if you got a good smoke going through you know good clean burn you're not going to over smoke your meat and you'll get a wonderful bark as far as like the trade-off from uh from a, a, a regular smoker to a electric smoker or like a master built you know I, I think you're definitely losing while it does burn you know some those wood chips and kind of gives you some smoke I think you're definitely losing the opportunity to get some really good quality smoke on the meat uh, you know again if you if you're doing something smaller like a pork loin uh, you know something like a master built would be great if I know people who are uh, who don't really like that much of a smoke flavor if you're you know if you fall in that category the the master built smoker or one similar to that would be great uh, you know it's almost like a set it and forget it as well you just I, I I personally think you just lose a little bit on the on that smoke flavor you so if you want you know a really good smoky again if you're doing a big meat pork butt uh, shoulder brisket uh, you, you know I just don't think you're gonna get the good smoke flavor right on those types of meats using a master goat uh, an electric smoker compared to like an offset or a WSM I, I think electrics are more suited for doing cold smoking like uh, smoking cheese and sausages and fish stuff like that um, because as James said you're not gonna get that true smoke flavor not even not even the smoke flavor you get from like a Weber Smoky Mountain or even a, a Weber kettle using uh, you know one of the, the smoking devices you can put in the kettle for the accessory it's not gonna be the same now they have their place I mean if you're like someone who lives in an apartment maybe oh yeah you know it, it, it's just perfect so I, mean, I don't I'm not like knocking it or anything. I'm not either no, no. Um, I, I'm just saying that if, if what, what you're trading off is is being able to produce a product that's like that has a really good smoke flavor right if that's what you're aiming for right yeah every different kind of cooker and pit and whatever they've all got a place and uh, again that's why I've got multiple ones because I can do different things on each one so it's nice having multiple you know options to choose from depending on what I'm cooking how long I want to cook and what I'm using for the fuel source that kind of thing is it my turn again Yes, sir. I think we're right. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> this is Jim. Yo, yo, two twelve. Appreciate the question. Cheers to you. I'm about out, man. You wanna fix me another one? I sure will. Yeah. Hook a brother up while I'm answering this one for Jim. T Roy, love your videos. Have you ever smoked white flesh fish, for example, walleye, or striper, as opposed to pink flesh fish like salmon or steelhead? I get a beautiful. I get beautiful results smoking salmon, but I can't seem to get good results with non-oily fish like striper. Any tips? Uh, you know, I don't really smoke a lot of fish, Jim. But uh, you know, I can, I can. What I would say of, uh, I, I like mahi mahi, and I, I know that's got a little bit of oil in it, but it's. I really like crappie, which, <laughs> you know, it's uh, they call it sack lay down in Louisiana. It's really good. It's white flake, flaky fish. What you may want to try is putting the fish on like some alder wood or some kind of other uh, wood plank to protect it from the heat. And that'll ex it'll actually put some smoke into the meat as well. And, uh, and I think that'll give you a better result with the non-oily type fish. So that's, that would be my suggestion. You have anything you ever do any smoke fish or anything uh, i actually smoke fish quite often do you yeah well yeah there you go and uh i, I however I, I it's it's usually uh salmon or tilapia a lot of the other fishes uh i'll be honest and say that i haven't tried uh, but i do do a lot of salmon and tilapia and like you mentioned you know, using the wood plank or something yeah i, I think definitely uh definitely helps as far as other uh fishes you mentioned you know honestly i've, I've never tried them so Stri striper and walleye and stuff. Yeah, so I, you know, I, yeah. I don't have a, you know, a whole lot of opinion on that, unfortunately. You, you may, you may want to try just putting like a little, little small aluminum pan of, of water just to add some moisture into the environment for the cooking chamber. That may help. I don't know. Yeah, I think it would. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it, you know, the oil adds moisture and kind of flavors it a little bit, you know, and keeps it moist. 
So if, if the meat itself is dry, put a little bit of water in the water pan and add some moisture to the cooking environment. That'd be my suggestion anyway. All right, Ben's BQ. Howdy, Ben's. Uh, Ben's question is, have you ever made a UDS or cooked in a UDS? Greetings, Ben. Ben's overseas, man. Yes, yeah. greetings, Ben. Cheers to you, Cheers to you Ben. Cool. Appreciate you, man. Y'all check out his channel, man. He's got a great channel. I actually yeah. watch it quite often. Link's down below in the show. Yeah. Just click show more. Appreciate you, Ben. So I've never made a UDS. However, uh, I would love to. As far as cooking on them, definitely. The I, I think they're great cooks. They're, they're a device where you get long hours out of. Uh, the only downside to them is you, you have to be careful with you know the lid and how long you leave it off once the, the longer you have that lid off once that fire starts to get get up there it's really tough to bring it back down I mean some of these UDS's do have they don't have vents but they have the the the, the ball valves and stuff to kind of let some air in but it's just really tough to if that fire gets really really high to bring it back down without having to completely choke it out to get it down so you know I think that's the only downside to a UDS I think they're great though you know you can you could cook quite a bit on them uh, you can get long hours uh, out of them I, I like them you know again the, the only downside is being able to really control that that uh, that heat like say a Weber Smoky Mountain or something so I can't wait to cook on that fair barrel cooker uh, yeah. I'm looking forward yeah, that's, to that that's very similar uh, is, yeah. to the to the um, UDS. Yeah, it is. Real similar. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, I'm not sure where you left off, brother. Let me see. Oh, we keep flip-flopping back and forth. Y'all excuse us. And like I said, no telling how long this video is going to be. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Jim was my last one. Let's, uh, let's go with this one. Uh, Miguel Aldiva. Hope I pronounced your name right, Miguel. Hey, Mr. Troy, I'm new to smoking. Been doing it for a year on my vertical propane smoker and getting an offset smoker. My question is, how much wood... Ah, this way. How much wood to maintain a long fuel? I've watched a lot of your videos, and videos to make sense of the basic practice makes perfect. is the best way to learn. Thank you for your advice, and keep the videos coming. Uh, well, on my offset, Miguel... It usually takes two to three logs, and I'm talking about 18 inch logs, to get it fired up. And it takes about an hour to an hour and a half to get the metal itself up to temp. So that's three logs, all right? Once I have it going, I add about one log the same size. Uh, and, and what I'm talking about is a log, you know, a big log. They cut it in half and then in half again so you got a quarter of a log 18 inches long that's what i use and let's say three of them to get started with and then one every 45 minutes to an hour to keep the same temp going so for uh let's say a 10 hour brisket i've got uh you know let's let's just say 10 10 logs plus the three i started with you got 13 and you know I'll usually round it up to about 15 so you, you can probably think about maybe 15 maybe 18 logs for a nice brisket or pork butt or something like that yeah I appreciate think. the question Miguel I would I would concur yeah yeah and that, that's what you'll find on most of your well-built offsets anyway yeah that, that's what I'm sorry brother that, that's what I was about to say depending on, on how well your your smoker is built yeah sometimes you can buy an offset from say like academy or like you know sporting goods store that's really thin or your local car, uh, hardware store right mm -hmm. yeah uh, compared to one that's like the yoder or maybe oklahoma joe that's a lot thicker that'll hold that that heat a lot better you know so that 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 that's going to kind of play into it a little bit also it will because yeah, you'll the, you'll, the quality of your smoker yeah you'll fly through that fuel if you got thin metal walls on your smoker yeah it will Take the next one, James. Uh, so good having you here, man. I love Appreciate being that, here. bro. I always love being here. Danny Boy 21483 question. Have you used grill grates 
If so, thoughts? Try to step up my steak game? How do you cook thick steaks? Thanks for the bids. Ooh, I like my thick steaks. <laughs> I love me some grill grates. I, mm -hmm. I recently uh, got some grill grates in and I, I think they're great. Not only just for steaks, but for chicken. I mean, these things are amazing. The design in them is, 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 is just, it, I, I think they're excellent. Um, so, and, and with the grill grates, you can actually cook, you know, from chicken to steaks to veggies to burgers to, I mean, they're just so versatile that um, I think they're an excellent accessory, an excellent addition to any like kettle grill um, that you might have. Uh, as far as, you know, how do you cook at this thick steak, you know, it, it really depends on how you like your steaks. I'm one that a few minutes on each side and I'm good. It's still moving? Still moving. All right. Yeah. If, <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you what, if you if you cook your steak well done, you've ruined it. Any steak, if you cook it well done, you've ruined it. So it's, it, it, you know, it just depends on how you like your steak. Um, but it really, I mean, there, there really isn't like a secret to cooking a thick steak. You know, again, it just, just, just depends on, on, on how well or medium well you prefer your steak. Have, have you ever tried doing a reverse sear and then searing it, you know, at the end? On a uh, thick, smoking on a it, steak. Smoking it and yeah. then searing it? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? That, Primo. Right, that works excellent. <laughs> That's excellent, man. Yeah, you get some smoke on there. And then, especially if you're using a grill grate, move it over that grill grate, get those nice, nice. you know, grill, grill marks. marks. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. Uh, Looks beautiful. Not. Tastes amazing. Mm. Um, you, you can't beat it. And then these grill it. grates, again, the way that they're designed, um, you'd be really tough to screw something up, or a, a steak uh, in particular. You, you know, they're, you like, just, they're cast iron, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you got really nice grill marks. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're just... Yeah. Excellent. Whether you're trying to get great grill marks on steak, pork chops, whatever. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're excellent. So I highly recommend them. Um, and I, I know a lot of other people that use them and they, they just, I haven't heard one bad thing about them. So. Sound like I need to give me some. We do. <laughs> All right. We got one here from Bob Ogus. Appreciate the question, Bob. Let's see, I've tried using the Weber Smoky Mountain like an offset, leaving the door open and feeding it those western mini logs. Cut down even smaller, and the flavor, the smoke flavor was much better. That's interesting, I hadn't tried that. Yeah. Uh, oh, you've tried it? No, no, it's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Temp control's not so easy, though. And it's got me interested in the quality offset. Any thoughts on Lone Star Grills? Bob, um, you know, I, I really... I know the, the Lone Star Grills are built here in Texas, and you don't like, I like supporting my Texas people. I've never even seen a Lone Star Grills, but I'll tell you what. My good friend Russ over at Smoky Ribs, he got one within the last month. And he's starting to do some cooks on his, and he is absolutely loving his Lone Star Offset Grill. Go check him out. LoneStarGrills.com, as I think is the website. But Russ is at Smoky Ribs on YouTube. And I'll put a link down below. Just click show more. As far as I can tell, it's equal, if not better, than a Yoder or a Gator Pit or a Lang Smoker or Jambo Pit. You know, they're all, when you get to that kind of grade of a pit, they're all real similar. So, kind of depends on what options you want on it and how much they're going to charge you for those options is the bottom line and how much it takes to ship it to you or if you're willing to go pick it up like i mentioned in uh, a recent video so check them out and uh, go check out smoky ribs he's got a, he's got some great videos coming up as well so y'all again check him out yeah, you know I'm, I, that, that's actually really interesting using that as a offset yeah i uh, never even imagined that but i would i would think maybe it might over smoke me but I, I could be completely wrong in fact now that you mention it i think that's something that i'm actually going to like experiment with it and just you know just to give it a shot and uh i i've actually see what talk, happens yeah I've, you know? I've talked about it and i haven't tested it either but i'm thinking that you've got three vents on the bottom and they're not the holes aren't that big so i'm thinking there's not mm. enough airflow going in 
actually there's not enough exhaust going out to accommodate the smoke going out that those three vents are going to pull in. So I'm thinking that your meat will get over smoke. And I think it's because of the lid vent only being one. You know, it's not letting enough smoke out. So that smoke's just going to billow around inside that lid and over smoke your meat. But it'll be a good test. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually going to, I'm seriously going to consider... Do, do a video on uh, it. Yeah, playing around with that. It, yeah. I, I, I may do that just to see what happens. It do may, some chicken, it may be great. Cheap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's some good chicken. stuff. On my grill grates. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, next question is from Moose Down Under. Oh, my buddy Moose. Moose. Hey, Moose. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, Moose. Cheers, Moose. He actually <laughs> says cheers. So I know, cheers. he does. He's a good friend, man. Moose says, I know a lot of Americans tend not to travel outside of the U.S. as the country is so big. Yeah. And uh, so much of these, are so, so much to see, but how aware or enlightened are barbecue heads about Asian barbecue methods? I'm thinking about mm -hmm. Korean hot plate grilling, Chinese street barbecue box cooking, uh, Mongolian <laughs> barbecue, and so forth. Do these ancient forms of grilling, smoking, or steaming mean anything to the boys and girls in the States? Appreciate the feedback. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I have a lot of buddies who who travel around the country, who compete, who have been on TV uh, competing, and my time around them, uh, speaking with them, and just just kind of knowing what I know, I'm going to say, you know, this this type of or this method of cooking is not something that. Um, it's yeah, big here. down here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not some even even the well-known uh, barbecuers that yeah. I know. Um, I don't ever see them like experimenting with anything like anything like this or cooking using these methods at all. And you know, I don't know if it's because they don't uh, know how or or what. But I'm gonna say you know it, it it isn't very these methods aren't very in my opinion in my experience aren't very big down here. Um, I. I think they're great methods, quite honestly. Um, but you know, for some reason, they're just they're just not. It's just not a very popular thing down here, as far as um, as far as like the circles that I'm in and the people that I know go. Um, it just it just isn't it isn't something that that's that popular that popular. You just don't see it a lot down here. So. Um, you know, I think if, if other people were into this stuff, it'd be really cool. But you know, I just I, I think they're just so used to like cooking traditional American barbecue that venturing out into these things or the, to these methods, you know, just just aren't a priority. Um, and I think here in the states, I think we're actually missing out on a lot of great techniques that that these methods bring. I agree. Um, you know, it's just you know I. I, I I'm sure you can find it some places, but like in the barbecue world, uh, you know, it's just not something that uh, is, is being used a lot. So um, maybe it's something we should check out. That that's a possibility. Yeah. It's just, it's just again, I, uh, I I think just because they're just so focused on cooking American barbecue or American style that you know we don't here in the states put a whole lot of thought or attention into. Yeah, you know, to this yeah. 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 Plus, you know, in, in parts of the country it's kind of difficult to get maybe some of the rubs or some of the, the seasoning spices. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, you know, folks like they're in Australia down under, you know, moose. You know, it's it's kinda of hard for you to get stuff that we use here in the States, you know. You just kinda of have to make do with what you have locally a lot of times. So it's uh some of it is not that we don't want to do that kind of stuff, it's that we can't do it because we don't have the means and the ability to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, and and and, and you know my my opinion on that is is strictly just like here in the state or here in Texas, I, other parts of the U.S. You know I I, I don't want to speak for I can't speak for um, because you might be able to find it in some of the other places, but you know down here in Texas, you know that's just we just don't put a whole lot of attention into that for some reason. It was that bottom one. Yeah, that's skip. I'm gonna skip that one. We're going to move on to another one here. I'm skimming through the questions. Bear with me. Check my <clears throat> 
Yeah, I just checked mine too. They, they're getting pretty tender over there. We're cooking live, y'all. <laughs> we'll show you some of this food here in a little bit. Y'all stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm doing some flanking style ribs. James doing some uh, pork ribs and uh, some beef ribs and some chicken. Oh, yeah. Looking good? Oh, yeah. Uh, Neil, Neil Prithridge, let's see, uh, my question for a Thursday chat is, have you ever smoked or barbecued a cut of meat that's not typically thought of for barbecue, like something you may roast in the oven? <clears throat> yeah, um, actually, uh, like a rump roast, yeah. You know, rump roast is uh, Sunday dinner, you know, and I'll tell you what, man, you put that thing on a smoker and just cook it un until it falls apart, like a brisket. That's some fine eating right there, man. Um, any of those larger roasts like that, they do very well on a smoker. But you got to do it low and slow and just let that, let all the, the marbling in the meat just kind of render out and marinate the meat and season the meat and tenderize the meat. And it's going to be some fabulous eating, man. Just let it go for a long time, just like you would a brisket. Fabulous. Appreciate the question, Neil. Let's see where you at. Uh, yeah, you answered that one. Let's see if I can uh, catch you up here. Uh, you answered that one. There you go. Oh, we got Sal. one from Root Boy, Sal. Sal, what's up, Sal? We're answering your question, Sal. <laughs> Cheers to you, buddy. Sal says, uh, look at the description box. I keep hoping you invite me on your show. Hmm. I'll have you on one day. Stay tuned, man. We'll have <laughs> you on. So for my question, I'm cooking some baby back ribs today, and uh, always, and always remove the membrane from the from the rib bones. My question is, do you remove the membrane? If so, why? Some folks don't remove it. Some folks score it with a knife. I like to remove it. Thanks. Rock on. Rock on, Sal. Y'all yeah, check him out, man. Yeah. Rude boy cooks. Rude boy cooks. Link, link, click show more down below. Cheers, Sal. Cheers to you, Sal. Cheers to you. Cheers. I love removing the membrane. I always remove it. Uh, the only time I will not remove a membrane if I'm cooking the big beef ribs that we get down here in Texas. You know, I'll leave it on then. Um, but I did a video in the past where I did half the ribs with the membrane and, and or one set with and then one without. And um, I just prefer removing it compared to leaving it on or scoring it I think you do get to a point where you know there's that little tug some people like that um, I don't some people say it it makes your ribs juicier leaving that membrane on the back it kind of holds the, the 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 juices in I don't find a whole lot of difference in that personally and maybe that's because I'm I constantly spritz uh, my ribs and, and do do stuff to them to, to make sure that they have moisture in them. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, when you take that bite, I just, I just like to just be able to take that whole bite and not get to the bottom of it and then kind of have to pull away from that membrane. So I always remove them. Uh, you know, I know some people don't. Again, it's, it's just a per personal preference. Uh, what about you? Do, do you remove yours? Do you leave them on? No, you bring up some good points. And uh, Sal, it's a great question, man. I appreciate that, man. Uh, I actually hardly ever remove the membrane on the back of my pork ribs. Uh, and, and I don't remove it on my beef ribs like James. But I like to leave the rib membrane on <clears throat> pork ribs myself. <clears throat> I think it does help keep the ribs a little bit more moist, more, more juicy. And, um, and I, don't, I don't put a lot of rubber or anything on the back because it's not really going to penetrate the membrane. But when you cook those ribs right, especially on an offset, that membrane gets paper thin. And I'm sure quite a few of you are nearly as old as me. And you remember the onion skin paper from the old typewriters where you actually had to type and, you know, swing the thing back to get it to go to the next line. Um, you had that onion skin paper. It's really, really thin. And when you cook that rib right, that membrane gets so paper thin that it's it's more of a you you can tell it's there, but it's not a deterrence to 
make you keep eating that rib. It's, it's not going to hurt anything that's going on with the rib. I actually do like it myself. Yeah. It, it, it's just a personal preference. It is. I think, I think that's the, that, that's one of those things that it's like a, uh, um, it, personal preference, you know. Personal preference, and, and it's it's one of those like hot topics, kind of like fat cap up or fat cap down. Yeah, you know, yeah, it, it is. It's, it, it's really a preference. Um, you know, I prefer moving them. Brother Troy prefers leaving them on. Uh, and and the, I still the, love you, though, man. <laughs> good, good, good. And, we and, all good. And here's the thing about barbecue, okay? Fat cap, fat cap up, fat cap down, membrane on, membrane, membrane off. off. There's no wrong way. No. It's really what you prefer. What's your preference? You nailed what it. What do you head. like to do? What what what? What's your preference? Yeah. You know, so I mean, you can try it both ways. Yeah, you you could cook barbecue with you know a thousand different ways, and 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 every way is right. So it really is just just a personal preference. Again, I prefer it off. Brother Troy prefers it on, and quite honestly, um, neither one of us are right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's. You're not wrong either way, so it really just is a as a personal preference it is. for you. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> How long do you think this video is going to be, James? Uh, we're 45 minutes so far. Oh, we are. Oh, yeah. you keep it tabs. I got. Oh, right here. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> let's see where I'm at. Uh, let's see. Mm hmm. 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 All right, we got one from Schultz34. T Roy, really enjoy your videos and I've learned a lot. I have a question about tuning plates. I have the Angus Smoker from Old Country Pits. I'm trying to even out the temp on the horizontal chamber while also trying the vertical chamber, while trying to keep the vertical chamber at a usable temp. Do you use planning a uh, tuning? Fifi, pardon me. My dog's going nuts. I think she's hungry. We've been kind of snacking on some snacks all day, folks. <laughs> I think she's waiting on something or wanting something. I know. She's wanting some more <laughs> chips and dip or something. I don't know. She's a cheeseaholic. She loves cheese. <clears throat> so anyway, he says, I'm trying to even out the temp on the horizontal chamber while also trying to keep the vertical chamber at a usable temp. Do you use tuning plates on the, the, on the odor? How should I space them? Thanks. Roll Tide, Chris from Alabama. Roll Tide? Roll Tide. Hook them. Hook them. <laughs> Ah, we love them all, man. I love college football. Yeah, we had a little national championship game yeah. a few years back. We did. Alabama. We did. That we really should have won. But well, you know what? Anyway. I'm, I'm from Baton Rouge. And, and Coach Saban used to coach the mm -hmm. LSU Tigers. Yeah. Then he went on to the NFL. Then he was like, no, nah, I don't like the NFL. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go back to college football. And he, he wound up in Alabama. So I'm happy for him. But, man, I'll tell you what, that's a hell of a coach. And we tried to lure him away from Alabama. Yeah, we, we did. did. It didn't we did. work. Didn't, didn't work. work, you know. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the question was. Uh, oh, the, the, the tuning plate? Yeah. Tuning plates. <clears throat> yeah, you know what? I don't have a tuning... I don't have tuning plates in my Yoda Wichita. What, what Yoda did, they have one long plate that fits inside the cooking chamber under the, under the grill grates. And they, have, they punch holes. All right. Now the holes are smaller towards the firebox, and they get larger as you get towards the smokestack. So it kind of lets a little bit of heat through towards the firebox, and as you get towards the smokestack, it lets more heat. So it kind of evens out the temp. With tuning plates, you've got probably six, you know, four to six inch wide pieces of metal, and you move them side to side and what's well, it's usually four or six inside the cooking chamber under, under the grill grates and usually put more of them in closer together towards the firebox because that's where most of the heat is you want that heat to bypass you know and get towards the smokestack so you're going to put them closer together towards the firebox and then start spacing them further apart as you get close closer to the stack that's my thinking on it anyway i've never actually owned one have you ever dealt with anything like that, James? Not tuning plates. Quite honestly, yeah. I, I have, you know, zero experience with them. So 
I, I really can't can provide a whole lot of. I'm, th- I'm thinking on that, unfortunately. I know me either. I, honestly, I, I haven't either. But I'm thinking maybe one tuning plate, like the first one, maybe an inch away from the firebox, and then another tuning plate, maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half away from that first one, and then maybe the next one, maybe two or three inches. But each pit's different. You have to try it out and see which works best for you. And also, do you want even temps across? The cooking chamber do you want to have one side hotter one side cooler that's what tuning plates are for <clears throat> so you have options just test it out do some cooks on it you know put some uh, some of those little uh, cheap oven thermometers in there on your grill yeah. grates and see see what the temps are and if if it's not to your liking you know remove the grill grates move the tuning plates a little bit see if it makes a difference and if it works in your favor, fine. If not, move them a little bit more in the other direction. Just play with it, man. Yeah. You know. Yeah, play with it till you. Uh, till you get it the way you like yeah. it. Next question from Mark was in, or was in, W A S N fifty five. Mark from Pentaton, B C, Canada. Cheers to our neighbors up north. Cheers to you. <clears throat> this uh, T Roy, have you ever used beer to spritz meat while while smoking? If so or not so, your thoughts. Um, I have on beef. I, I I will use. I like a good Mexican beer, like at the got the they got the light. But really, I was thinking like Shiner Bach or something. Uh, you know, I'm not much of a of, of a of a dark beer. I'm, kind I'm not of guy, either. But but uh, it's and, like and, coffee. And, it's like coffee or espresso on uh, on beef. Yeah, it, it might work. I mean, I've never tried it. I, I've, I've only used uh, uh, like the tecate, a, uh, right the got the got the light. Usually, the got the light, um, and usually that's just like on beef. If I'm doing like a beef rib or a, like a fajita, I've never tried it on say chicken or pork ribs. I think the the beer is good for beef, your 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 beef meats. Uh, I don't think it goes very well with your pork meats. That's just my, my chicken either, oh, or, or, or chicken yeah. poultry. Um, you know, it's just my opinion. Some of you may have tried it on that, and it works great. But uh, you need I, a strong, a strong flavored meat. Yeah, one one that one one that can handle it. Yeah, some wild game would be great. Um, but I've definitely used it on on beef. I think it goes, you know, using using beer uh, goes great with that. You know, growing up, <laughs> uh, in, in fact, growing up, you, you know, Mexicans. 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 Not, not Mexicans. Mexicans. <laughs> we'll get that, that grill fired up, right? And we'll take a beer and just, no matter what's on there, and just like... Douse it. Douse it, you know. And so, I mean, I guess it works, but... Uh, hey, use what you got, man. <laughs> yeah, but so, you know, growing up like that, you know, uh, we I've definitely seen beer used like that, but I kind of prefer it just on beef. Um you know, I'll use it from time to time, actually, uh, especially on fajitas. I think it works great with fajitas. It does. It does. Um, I like tequila on fajitas. Ooh, I haven't tried that. Dude, that's that's jamming, man. Oh. T- t- tequila is awesome on fajitas. I might have to try that. I did a video on that. I'll put it up here for you. <laughs> so on beef, yes. On on the other meats, um, you know, I I, I, I haven't uh, used it or I really don't use it. You know, on on, on on the other beats, uh, I just you know, I just don't know how well the, the the beer goes with let's say poultry or pork. So uh, I'm reckoning not as good as it does with beef. <clears throat> Live and learn, try it out. If you find something that works, let us know. Yeah, if you use a different like a, a Bach or, or yeah, you know, a, a different type of beer that maybe does pair well, pair well, well yeah. you know, with 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 uh, pork or chicken, it, it may work. Is that working on you? Just a Look, little bit. I'm almost down to two of these that I've downed, and you still on your first one. No, you see, what Brother Choi hasn't noticed is when he's been talking, I've had mine over here already oh, pre-made. Oh. So I just kind of been filling mine up. Oh. So oh, that's why he hadn't seen me grab the bottle and stuff to make one. I, I was wondering. Pre- I had it pre-made. I was wondering. Okay, <laughs> all right. So we're 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 right here together. Enough said. We're together. I'm so glad you're here, man. <laughs> These ribs, these pork ribs that are on this pit. Oh, oh my word. They smell fantastic. I wish y'all were here to smell all this that going pull, on. That pullback. 
Very yeah. excellent. We're going to have to cut this video so we can go eat. I know, right? <laughs> mm, my goodness. <clears throat> All right. So I got another one here. Um, let's see. Um, Timothy. Timothy Dishno. Okay? Tim, you've been a long time sub. I appreciate the support, man. He says, another great Thursday chat. What up, Big Dub Troy? What's the longest time you've went without firing up your Weber Smoky Mountain? Man, that's, oh, you know, I want to say it's been probably three or four months. Yeah, because I, uh, in fact, it was last year. I had my back surgery where I, well, not back surgery, but I, I had a surgery where I had uh, a mass around my esophagus, and they cut through my back to get to it, to remove it. And, uh, in fact, I neglected all my pits for at least two months. But, uh... I really miss the smell of my Yoda Wichita being fired up, so I, I think I used that first. And I think I did something on the Kamado, and and then I think the third one was my, my Weber Smoky Mountain. So it, it was probably close to four months. Uh, yeah, it's it's been a long time, and uh, I hate neglecting it that long. In fact, I didn't drive two of those months. It was rough just getting back behind the steering wheel and actually driving. That was, that was pretty rough, but uh, anyway, thank goodness I have family around and Karen and my mom, you know, and brothers and sisters, all that helped me out, you know, so, and thank you all for sticking with me through all of that. I appreciate it very much because it was probably four months or so before I put a video back up, even just letting you know how it was and everything, but uh, yeah, man, it's, I'd say about four months or so probably for the Weber Smoky Mountain. I, like I said earlier, I don't like to go very long without firing up one of my smokers one of my cookers because I like to spread the love plus I know that a lot of my fans you know maybe you don't have a rubber smoking mountain maybe you've got a Kamado Joe so I like to use a Kamado Joe for those fans I like to use my Yoda Wichita for my offset fans I like to use a Weber Smoky Mountain for my Weber Smoky Mountain fans so I like to try to spread the love and just kind of do a little dabbling of everything when I can what about you James I fire mine up every damn weekend <laughs> that's not a, that's not an exaggeration <laughs> i i use mine uh all the time uh, it's when in, smoking in, mountains are fabulous yeah in fact i was telling brother Choi, i have a i had an oklahoma joe offset smoker that i just sold a couple weeks ago because i hadn't used it in over a year i used my weber smoky yeah. mountain my weber kettle so much that my Oklahoma Joe was just kind of taking up space. I mean, the, uh, the Weber Smoky Mountains just man, I love those things, and they just cook so great that I didn't I didn't need the stick burner. And I, I'll, I'll eventually get another stick burner, but I just got rid of mine a couple of weeks ago. In fact, just because I fire my Weber Smoky Mountain up like all the time, every weekend, and, it, and it's not the weekend; it's during the week. So I, I use mine I'll, all the time. I love that you can set it, and forget it, just. Put the meat on there. You got your vent set. You walk inside and go watch some football or yeah. whatever, basketball, baseball, whatever, and just let it do its thing. It does the hard work, you know. Makes they're, you look good. They're phenomenal. They're great. Highly, highly recommend it. Yeah. In fact, that leads us to our next question. Oh. But honestly, from David Hornbeek. Ah, okay. Uh, David says, uh, "Love your videos, Troy." Uh, he found you and Jason through doing some research on smoking. Um, he says, as a beginner on a limited budget, should I start with a 22-inch Weber Smoky Mountain or a similar price offset I have found? I know I want to get a stick burner eventually, but I worry that the cheaper ones won't cook better than the Weber Smoky Mountain. Uh, and I should start there and get a higher-end smoker later on. Your thoughts? Great great question, Dave. Yes. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, you know what? Weber needs to hire me. Yeah, no. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to agree with him. Watch. Because <laughs> I... Get, get the Weber Smoky Mountain. Get the Weber Smoky Mountain. Yes. For that, the 22 inch, you know, that's the $400 one. Yeah. Um, you're not going to find an offset smoker, a good quality offset smoker for that price. We talked earlier about like... You know why they're never on sale? Because they're so popular. Yeah. You never go you, find them on sale. You know what? You're, you're, I never thought about that, but Troy is 100% right. They're so, they don't need to put them on sale. It's People, the best smoker for the money. For that price, you and we, we mentioned it earlier in the video about like the thickness of the metal stuff. If you're finding yeah. an offset for 
$400, which is what the 22-inch Weber Smoky Mountains cost, and I know because I've got four of them. <laughs> um, unless, you can your, find, unless you can find one on Craigslist. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, right, Lyle? <laughs> Brother Lyle. Got Brother Lyle. Lyle. <laughs> no happy barbecue. Uh, on Craigslist. <laughs> but, uh, Love you, man. <laughs> but, you know, for, for, for that price, I'm a huge, huge fan of the Weber Smoky Mountain. Me you, too. You, for that price, and, you know, people ask me quite often, like, what what smoker do you recommend when, when they're when they're looking for the very first smoker? The Weber Smoky Mountain, without a doubt, is the only thing that I recommend. Again, Weber don't pay me to say that, but damn it, they need you. <laughs> now, now I will also input this much. I've heard good things about the uh, the PBC. What was it? The uh, pit barrel cooker. Pit barrel cooker. I have not cooked on mine yet, so. I'm gonna I'm I'm hold my uh, my thoughts on that, but I hear that it is absolutely the best <clears throat> smoker for the money because it's only like two hundred bucks. That may be the case. So yeah. I, so we'll see. It's it's like a UDS. Yeah. But I know the Weber Smoky Mountains are fabulous, and you definitely get what you pay for, and they last a long time because they are very well made. And the the pit barrel I've never cooked on them. I I, I know a lot. You know, that's that's actually taking off and becoming really popular yeah. pit barrel if you want me to review your product <laughs> send him one Noah send him one talk holla at a Mexican anyway <laughs> uh, the, 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 I, I know a lot of people are actually jumping on this pit barrel wagon and yeah. quite honestly I, I wouldn't mind trying one out myself um, I'll let so, you try out mine so when when, uh, when when we're talking about a smoker a, a great smoker for that price that pit barrel actually may be one of them also yeah I, I I, since I've never cooked on one, I can't, you know. I can't either. Talk about it. and, and But a, a lot of people that I follow that use them, you know, speak highly of them. They love them. Yeah. Uh, I just know that the Weber Smoky Mountain, I, I, I use it all the time. Yeah, we're talking and, from experience with the Webers. Yeah. You know? Just because just that's that's what I use. That's what I use in competitions. It's, for the money, you know, it's just it's just so reliable. It's a, it's, it's it well is. built. And you can get, you know, long cooks out of it. It's just, you know, we're talking like get it. twelve to fifteen hour cooks. You know, it's yeah, it, it, it's, easy. It's, it's it's just amazing. They're yeah. amazing. Again, the, the pit barrel might be equally as amazing. Uh, it's not something I've tried, yeah. so you know, I, I can't speak to that. But if you're looking at a Weber Smoky Mountain compared to an offset, I'm going to suggest a Weber Smoky Mountain just because for that price. My experience with an offset, you're, you're not going to find a, a, a really good quality no, offset you're you're, unless you're finding something like on Craigslist or something. Uh, but a brand new one from your hardware store or, or sports store, sports authority store, it's not going to compare. You're going to have, you're yeah. going to waste more fuel trying yeah. to keep it fired up than you will the benefit from the, the from the food that you get off of it. It's, yeah. it's, it's a lost cause. And the Weber Smoky Mountain actually does produce some great barbecue, folks. Really, really good barbecue. Trust me. Y'all see me cook on it. It does wonderful. I use it for my catering gigs. Yeah. Um, you, you've uh, you've placed well, really well in some competition cooks with them. Yeah, I've I've had multiple top ten finishes in yeah. my Weber Smoky Mountain. Um, you know, in briskets, it's there. There's just. They're they're extremely reliable. In fact, that's what I use in all my competitions for my brisket, since they take like a long, mm -hmm. they, they take longer to cook, or uh, yeah, they take longer to cook. My Weber Smoky Mountain, set it, forget it, produces great smoke flavor, great smoke ring. It's you know, there's just. I think I heard you talking about this earlier. If you don't mind telling my fans, what, what do you use for the fuel for your Weber Smoky Mountain on, <coughs> on a long cook like a brisket? So. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of, uh, I like Kingsford, they make a great product, mm -hmm. Kingsford Charcoal, uh, but I, I, I prefer B&B, &B. again, they're, they're not a sponsor or anything, you know, so. And they may not be where you are, but they're locally here in Austin anyway. Yeah, the B&B &B Charcoal, B&B uh, &B, uh, Lump, uh, they also make a, a competition char log, which is, they actually, they're, they're, they're shaped almost exactly the same shape as like. You know the roll of a toilet paper. These logs, they work great. Hmm. Uh, I use those in competitions. They have bark on? Or no, no. It's it's just it's just, just charcoal. No, it's charcoal. 
Oh, charcoal. Oh, yeah. Like lump charcoal. L lump charcoal. Ah. It's, it's lump charcoal in the shape of a uh, toilet paper, uh, you know, the, the... The roll. The roll of the toilet paper inside. It's shaped just like that. Hmm. Those things are amazing. They work great. Interesting. I, I use them at my competitions. I get 15 hours the last time I used it. And and it would have gone longer. I had to shut it off. I was done cooking. I mean, it, they just... Huh. They burn slow. Huh. They burn clean. So... You know, B and B is is what I use. Yeah, I like B and B lump yeah. charcoal myself. Yeah, yeah. I haven't tried those yet, but yeah. uh, I definitely will. Kingsford is good again, but I I, I just prefer B and B. Huh? Interesting. Personally. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <coughs> see if I can find a question. Uh, let's see. I may have to go back a few pages. Yeah, I think it was two pages. All right. I answered Tim's. Dan, Dan Calkins, <laughs> my buddy Dan up in Wisconsin. He says, Troy, have you ever heard of the flip-flop grill traditionally used for chicken? I'm not sure. <coughs> Excuse me. He says, I'm not sure if it's a Wisconsin thing or not, but there's zero videos on YouTube that feature them, and they make the best chicken ever. No joke. Dan. I actually saw your comment, your question, and I went out and bought the flip-flop grill, and I, I tell you what, it does make some fantastic chicken. I appreciate you suggesting uh, or asking the question, and uh, man, it got me curious, so I went out and bought one, and y'all checked out that video right here. That's a fantastic cooker, man. It's, it's very portable. <clears throat> In fact, let me, let me, uh, let me show you real quick just how how small it is. This is it right here, folks. This is it. Flip-flop grill. See? It's got legs that fold down and then the sides, they come apart. It's four sides. And you got the grill, flip-flop grill itself. Dan, that is a fabulous grill. So thank you very much for uh, for letting me know about it, man. I've never heard of it, and I just had to try it out, especially for less than 100 bucks. That is the best portable grill that I've ever ever owned, ever used, and uh, definitely, definitely some fabulous chicken. Hey, Lucy. Hey, Lucy, what you doing, girl? You wanna say hi to my fans over there? Hey, baby, what you doing? No, don't you get up on the table, girl. No, no. Come here, Fifi. Come here. Come on, jump. Come on, jump. Come on, Fifi. Come here. My fans want to see you. Come here. Jump. Lucy. Oh, damn it, Lucy. Look, it's Fifi right here, y'all. Oh, come on. Come on, Lucy. Get down. Come on. Lucy. There you go. Sorry about that, Keith Batag. She mooned you again. It's Fifi right here. Anyway, um, folks. We're fixing to go and uh, pull off some of this meat, I think. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call this one done. And I'm kind of stalling for time because James went inside to get some, some saucer or something, some rubber, maybe some butter or something. I don't know. I don't know. He wanted to get something to, to put on his, uh, his ribs and stuff. But I really do appreciate y'all joining me. And, uh, man, it's great having James over here. And uh, we're just having a great time today cooking on my yard of Wichita. And uh, man, this, this, is, this is fabulous. Really enjoying it today. And again, like I said, I'm stalling. Hoping he'll come back here real soon. <laughs> Anyways, there he is. I'm stalling. I told him I'm stalling for you. Because I was going to end the video. <laughs> get back over here. Come on, get down, Lucy. Get down, get down, get down. There you go. So. <laughs> Again, sorry guys. James is over here. I appreciate y'all hanging on. I was trying to stall as best <laughs> dead best I could. I was trying to hurry. I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, folks, I appreciate y'all joining us, and I really do appreciate you joining me over here, James. Brother Troy, thank you for having me. I, it's it's, thank it's you, a true, true uh, honor to be able to do a video with you and just to hang out with you, man. I love I coming over, hanging out. It's the first time so. I've actually had somebody live with me answering questions. <laughs> You are it, man. Yeah. You're the first one. Awesome. And I wish I had a drink to do cheers with you. 
Uh, I got a beer. I got a beer. Hang on. Oh, I'll do this. There you go. There you go. Y'all, y'all will see uh, Jose in, in in a future video. He gave me some uh, Pacific Gold beer that he brought over. So, uh, Jose, I appreciate you coming over today, hanging out with me and James. Yeah, it was nice meeting you, brother. Thank you very much for the beer. Cheers to you, my friend. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, I was going to oh, do cheers yeah. to you. Cheers. 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 Mm. Folks, it doesn't get any better than this right here. My brother James. Love Lyle. hanging out with this guy. Lyle, I wish you were here, man. Yes. Yes, that would, that would have been awesome. So, folks, if y'all like this, and I hope you do, I've heard a lot of great comments letting me know that, you, you know, your feedback is important to me. And uh, y'all let me know that y'all like this kind of stuff. So I uh, hope y'all like these longer videos. We'll try to do another one for you with me and James in the future. And, uh, man, if y'all like this, y'all give me a thumbs up. And I can't thank James enough. Amy McClam, Smokers, y'all check him out. Links down in the description box, and I'll put his channel up here for you. I appreciate it. Anything you want to say? No. Uh, we uh, good? We're good. Hey, thank you guys for for uh, allowing me to to uh, to join you. Thank you for allowing me to join you. It's it's my pleasure, man. Yeah, it's a, it, it really is an honor. I love helping my brothers and sisters out. Do cooking channels on YouTube. Yeah. But again, folks, if y'all like this, y'all give me a thumbs up. Go check out James Amon McClamon Smokers. And uh, y'all check out the description box. Hit show more. Follow all the channels we mentioned earlier. And uh, check out the other information there in the description box. And I hope y'all share this video. And when you do, please tell all of your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. responsibly. Cheers, everybody. Salute. Salute.